No. The tire's okay. Whew. I will go okay. Good. Do you have insurance? Do you have family insurance? I don't even know how it works. I don't either. Can I see? Take, take a picture of it. Whew. I'm going to pull over a little, Kurt. All right, guys. First, we're okay. Second, we came up on this curve and a car was really just hauling ass. You can see where he hit his brakes and he was on uh, definitely not over to one side and he was going really fast. His brakes locked up. He tried, he tried to get around us, but he was going too fast. And uh, unfortunately, he uh, hit us. Um, I hope the van is okay. I mean, it definitely has some cosmetic damage. And um, they don't speak English. He seems to speak a little German. That doesn't help us. But you can definitely see from his brakes that he was the one going way too fast. Oh, everybody's okay. They're okay. We're okay. I'm going to pull the van over a little bit. So we're not sitting here dangerously on this curve. But you can definitely see the tire marks. It was them and not us. Oh. What a way to start a beautiful day. When we first thought about this lifestyle of living and traveling in a van full time five years ago, we talked about the fact that at some point we were gonna be faced with some curveballs on the road. We didn't know what or when, but we know that's just how life works. Stuff happens. And for those of you who follow this journey, you know we've faced our share of challenges. From earthquakes in Mexico, to flash floods in Panama, to exploding volcanoes in Guatemala, to total knee replacements in Colombia, to major heart surgery in Buenos Aires, to getting stuck for days, miles from anyone in the windy Patagonia, to getting our windows smashed while we're sleeping in the van in Chile, and to today, getting our van sideswiped by a reckless driver, we've learned a lot of lessons along the way. And here are two big ones. First, it's not what happens to you, but it's how you handle what happens to you that determines your future. Now this can be a lot easier said than done, and that leads us to number two, take care of your health. And when we think of health, we always think of physical health. But what we've learned is that it all kind of begins with your mental health. When we're mentally sharp and when our mind is in the right place, we can respond better when stuff happens and we can recover more quickly from setbacks and get us back on the journey where we belong. But again, it's a lot easier said than done. And sometimes you need a little outside help or perspective, and that's where BetterHelp comes in. Now, this is a sponsored video by BetterHelp. First, you go to their site, and you can use the betterhelp.com slash snow and Kurt link that's in the description. You answer a few questions, and BetterHelp will match you with a professional who has years of experience helping people with struggles just like yours. You'll be matched with a therapist usually within 48 hours so you can get started fast. If you decide to let BetterHelp connect you with a therapist who can support you and you go to the link betterhelp.com slash snow and Kurt during sign up, you can enjoy a discount on your first month. The link is in the description. Now let's see how we recover from this situation we find ourselves in here in Albania. I pulled to the other side of the curve so we weren't sitting in such a dangerous spot. 
but you can sure see he was getting it and he was nowhere near his side of the road. Uh, honestly, we don't know how insurance works and what we do. So I think Kurt's getting a copy of their information. We'll probably need to find an Albanian that can help us. Uh. He said we can't move the cars, call the police. Well, we had to get off of where we were. Yeah. Well, we don't have phone signal here, so I told him we could. Maybe we go to the campsite and get Linda. I I the mic. Why is this keep Oh, I pay for my car to take the stuff. Yeah. I will call the police. What is your name? Yes. Din? D I N? Do you have uh, any picture or like name with your name? What? Din. D I N? Yeah. Nothing. Din? Yeah. What is your last name? Din? Why? He wants to know why. Yeah. Don't worry about it, man. He wasn't going to give you his name, was he? We got a lot of video. All right. He wouldn't give us his name. He said his insurance only covered his car and not ours. There's no cell service out here. We don't know what we can do. I'm sure he's supposed to carry insurance that covers other cars and not his. It's what we're required to do when we drive in Albania. But what do you do when you're in the middle of nowhere? Thankfully, we can drive our car. So we need to look at the tire a little bit. Whew. So you were kind of cruising down that road and you guys know us, we get to a blind corner like that, we take it nice and slow and this guy was ripping around the corner and it's sort of like your worst fear. Um, he locked up his brakes immediately. We didn't have to lock up our brakes because we weren't going that fast. And all we could do is just sit there and see what he was going to do. There was a guardrail and so as he Fortunately, he didn't make a head-on contact. Whew. He got by the side of the van, clipped the back quarter panel of our van, and also on the other side, he clipped the guardrail. So he threaded the needle between us and the guardrail, and he was going really fast. Anyway, after talking to him for a while, he was a little kind of shady. He said there was nothing we could do, the police could do if we moved the cars. Uh, we don't have cell phone collection, connection because we're out here in the middle of nowhere, so we can't call the police. Um, we really don't have many options other than he wouldn't give me his information. I took a picture of his license plate. He wouldn't even tell me what his name was. I got a picture of him. I don't know what, if anything, we can do. He said his insurance only covered his car, not our car, so... That doesn't sound right. Anyway, we don't know what the rules or laws. We don't know what to do. I guess we have two choices. Either, you know, maybe like we go to the police station or we go back and talk to Linda or somebody we know and see if we have any recourse. Recourse. I doubt we have any. Or if number two, if we just chalk it up as another one of those things. Patina. Patina, <laughs> character, whatever you call it. Uh oh, big truck, big truck, big truck, big truck. <sighs> okay. All right, guys, we got to focus on driving here. This is. A... Do I need to watch the? Just take your time. Take your time. You might want to pull your mirror in. I don't think we got room. Can we get through there? He wants you to go. Back's gonna be the hard part. You got 
two inches over here, Kurt. All right, straighten it up. You've got one inch if you really need it. All right, you're, okay, back that way if you can. All right, turn back, back your way. Ooh. Let's get off this road, Curdy. Wow. Let's get off this road. These cars are going fast up through here. We're just putting, but it doesn't matter. The day is just getting started, and we've already had enough bad excitement for three months in Albania. But this is what we've decided. We're okay, the van is drivable, it just has some cosmetic damage. We probably will try to figure out how to fix the mud flap, but that is nothing that's urgently needed. We, uh, we're just gonna go. We're heading south, we're not letting it mess us up. It is a battle scar. But I wanted to tell you guys something because I know a lot of you are gonna ask in the comments why we don't turn it into our insurance. What you need to know is that when you travel like we do, every time we take a van registered in the United States, like our van is, into another country, we are temporarily importing that van. And you always hear us talking about having to have insurance. But that is liability only. It only covers damage to other people's stuff. It does not fix our van. And that is a, a thing you have to deal with as an overlander to get insurance that would actually cover our vehicle in most countries is impossible in the countries that it is possible it is extremely expensive and whether or not you would have the legal means to enforce it are always a big question so we're basically self-insured when you travel like we do from country to country so there is no need for us to try to turn this into our insurance company it simply would not be covered right yeah and additionally you know if you run through the scenarios of trying to litigate it or hold the guy accountable i mean he was clearly a low integrity individual he lied to me several times and anyway there's just really no reasonable recourse other than to go on so the van is drivable. It has a new battle scar from Albania. We are good. The cats are good. We're southbound. Let's go. Shaking it off. Look at him run it. So we are driving through the countryside, through some vineyards and a lot of small farms. And we're heading to what we hope is our next campsite. Now it is a farm to table restaurant that our friend Tim told us about. If you remember Tim, he's a friend of Kurt from high school. Ostrich, ostrich. There's ostriches. Baby, oh, oh, there's a car coming around the curve. So hold on, we have to see the ostriches. Guineas. We're in all sorts of different <laughs> farmland. There's definitely ostriches here. We've seen Reyes in Brazil, but those are definitely ostriches. And we just came by a bunch of geese, and there's also some little guinea hens down there. Ah, a pretty cool little area out here, unexpected. Okay, yeah, I think we park up there under the vines. All right. So the way we understand it is, you can camp here for free. You just need to buy something from the local farmer shop, or eat at the farm-to-table restaurant. But you know us, we might do both. So, there you go. Imagine parking under this when the vines are growing. That would be cool, huh? Reception. Yeah, this is a nice little place. Thank you, we'll go to registration. I think uh, we, if we want to eat at the restaurant, I think you have to have a reservation. Yeah, so we'll just go up there. That's where we're at now. All right, right as we pulled in. <laughs> right as we pulled in, we're at the goat area. You see they stick their little heads through here to get the water. <laughs> All the parents are eating. What are you guys doing? 
<laughs> Look at this little one walking on the other one. All oh, these button each other. Don't get pooped on. <laughs> he does not like that. Look at the pupils, they're long. <laughs> The goats are just walking on the donkeys. <laughs> He's like chewing the donkey's hair. He's like eating his hair. Oh, he just got crapped on. Uh, the hay bale crack. Oh, that's what that is, a tractor. <laughs> so we have made it to this beautiful farm to table restaurant. Look at this, guys. And we've already kind of showed you a little bit of the farm. We came up here to make reservations for lunch and it turns out they're gonna give us a free tour of this. So this is an absolute farm to table restaurant. And so we are going to see how and where the exact food that we're going to be eating today is come comes from and how it's made and processed. Super cool experience, guys. Wow, this place is beautiful. So this is how you make rocky. Yeah. So you put the grapes in there. Yeah, how long? The fire. How long? It's for three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks, and that distills it into here, and then it comes out there. The jug, yeah. Now, do you grow the grapes here? Yeah, we have we have almost two kind of vineyards, and we grape we grow up our grape here. But uh, we also made a different rocky with different type of fruit, so we made with cranberries. Where do the cranberries come from? The cranberry, it's this those tree there. Oh, so you grow in it here. In the middle of the table, it's growing up in those big trees. Okay. So we have a lot of cranberry here. Jam, we made juice with cranberry, rocky, and also we made compote. Wow. Nice. So you can see here, there's a bunch of cabbages, I believe that is and maybe some Brussels sprouts and other greens. And then back here, you can see the vineyards. And unfortunately, since we've been in Europe, it's been winter time and all the kind of vineyards look like this. So no leaves, no grapes or anything. So as the year progresses, we'll get to see all these vineyards progress as well. <laughs> so the white flowers there, guys, are on a plum tree. And the plums are little red plums and they make the Duraki out of them, they make jams. And of course you can also just eat the plums here. And look at this grape sculpture here made with the rocks, it's so cool. You heard about Enver Hoja? During, it was a communist here in Albania, so yes. during his time, all the place here, it was a former prison. Kind um, of political prison. This was a former this prison. This one here, yo, everything that you see here around us, it was a political prison. So in 2016, we just rebuilt the walls and turned to fabric fresh food. Perfect. So everything that you can see here, you can taste in a table later. Okay. So, so you took something bad and made it good. Yeah. Nice. So first we can uh, see the place where we made cheese. This is left. Okay. Cheese, yogurt, and ricotta and yogurt.
different type of cheese. We call it fetch habal. It's okay. like the hard cheese, yellow cheese. Okay. So after we made cheese, we put here and we keep here for 24 hours to dry. Mm -hmm. And we put in those little cups there. And during those 24 hours, we change the size because what we need to change is cheese. to take out. Yeah. And then from here, we put in the fridge others. Right. We have one special cheese, so you can see that cheese with mold or brie cheese. Brie cheese. We have a special fridge for this one because it needs more mold. Yeah. Okay. So we have this one yeah. I can see it on top. Yeah. Also, you can place this one in lunch. Yeah. At lunch, okay. So does this turn blue then? No, just white. Just, just white? Yeah. A brie. Because the mold is food mold. Yeah. So it doesn't turn blue. So what is this kind of cheese? It's goat cheese and also cow cheese. So the kind of yellow one, it's uh, from uh, from cow, and the white one, this one here, it's from goat. It's from goat, yeah, and some and of it's some of it's in brine or salt water, and yeah. some of it's in wine. Yeah. And so this uh, is wine well, here. We keep just uh, cow cheese here. We keep for one month or one month and a half. One month and a half. Hatch Cabal. Hatch Cabal. Will we try this at lunch? No, because no. for the moment we don't have okay. any service, but we can taste it in the stores. In the stores, yeah. Hatch Cabal. So this one mostly is made from uh, cow milk. We also have uh, Hatch Cabal cheese with chili pepper. Oh, that would be good. We, in winter, we made the walnuts with cheese. So Ooh. we put walnuts inside the cheese. In the fridge, in normal times, six to eight months, but also we can keep our mud here. So oh, okay. Yeah. Look at this! Oh, it smells so good. There's a place when we make jams, we make different pickles here. So for every season, we pick up the vegetables or the fruits to make jam or pickles. Okay. Yeah. This is chestnut jam? Can yeah, I that one is chestnut. Oh, look at the chestnuts in there and jam. Wow. And this one here is the smaller one when we the cats. We have um, fig jam. Is this like here? We have mulberry jam. We have cut up with the white skin of the watermelon. Mm -hmm. And also we have jujube with white wine. Yeah, jujube they are kind of traditional fruit, something like you don't have in all the places asiatic food. We have a spicy sauce that we made with uh, chili pepper. We have chestnut jam, corn onion cherry jam, or dried tomatoes with all the oil. All kinds of good stuff. <laughs> Look at this. Also, this chestnut jam that we saw there. All right, now we are going into where they grow, they make the wine. Take a look at the clipper. Uh, the best people that we pick up to pick them. Yep. Uh, and here we have the potatoes. Wow. Oh, she's testing it. She's like, not ready yet, not ready yet. Mostly we use Calmet grape here. It's Albanian berry tea and growing up in our area. But also we can make a mix with other grapes to make different wines. So we have five wines, three are red, one white, and one rosé. Okay. So we can go to the end and we can see also the other Okay, perfect. Thank you. Here we put cores and also here we do bottling. Okay. Labeling. Yeah. Yeah. So and there we have white wine and red wine. We serve open wines in the restaurant. Okay. Yes. Like meat? I'll yeah. skip this one. Can we go in this Alright, here we draw a ham and sausage and we use pork and cow meat. Pork and cow meat. Yeah. Uh, this one here, yeah, this is how we smoke. Oh smoke it. Yeah. Okay. We smoke cottage cheese over there. We go down. And also here in this part we have a uh, sausage and ham. Be careful. You're gonna get smoked. <laughs> <laughs> careful. <laughs> so, <laughs> I held my breath. Are you, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at this. So what is this? So I can see the mold on the outside. Yeah, exactly. So you clean that yeah, afterwards? You clean before we use. You clean. So this one here is uh, cow meat and that one is pork meat. 
So is is it brined with a lot of salt before you smoke it? Yeah, this is how we make. So before we smoke, we put here with uh, garlic, wine, uh, with salt, with uh, different spurs, and we let it here for two or three days, and then we dry this one from the juice that it takes, and then we smoke in the. Uh, so you just have like a dehumidifier, so that just takes all the moisture out of the air. Because it feels a little bit wet in here, yeah, though. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Far from because when we take out from the smoke, it's the contact that we made with the cold. Ah, yeah. So it takes a little bit yeah. of a while for it to suck all the moisture out. Yeah. I like this. This is cool. Thank you. And also here, in the picture, we have our farmers. They bring here grapes, but except the grapes, they bring here every kind of food, every kind of So food. these are local farmers yeah. that also contribute to bring the yeah. food. Yeah. Uh, also, we have um, 400 farmers that they contribute here with everything. Nice. Look at them bringing their grapes. <laughs> you have four, 400 farmers that bring food here? Yes. They bring grapes, different meat. Is all the food sold or consumed here, or do you sell to outside no, no, markets? No, no, everything we just make and we so we use here. Mm -hmm. We don't sell in every market. The food, also the wine, we can uh, sell in some places. Some oh, you do sell the wine in some places. A lot of wine. We wine. Most of the red wine we keep in the barrel for seven or eight months in a barrel that we keep in the bottle. Also here we made wine tasting as well. Mm -hmm. So those are our wines. Those are red, this one is white, rosé and raki. So raki is considered wine, it's not considered no, no, liquor or no, alcohol. No, it's kind of moonshine. moonshine. Yeah, yeah, moonshine, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not wine, it's something. We had some. Yeah, it's raki. <laughs> it's raki, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. Raki. Thank you. And do you do your own honey here as well? Yeah. I thought I saw bee yeah. boxes up there as well. Yeah. Hi, by the way. My name's Kurt. What is My name it? is Natalie. Natalie? Natalie? Yes. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Are you going to try some? Yeah. But There's I two things right here. Bees. And what is the name of this? This is a cow cheese. This is cow cheese. Yeah. There's the one with the peppers in it, Kurt. Cow cheese. <laughs> and so that's that one. That one. That one. And this one right here? This is Kachkova. No, no, Kachkova. Ah, the special one. Yeah. None of those are ready for our lunch right now. That's good. <laughs> and this was cow and goat. No, it's only cow. And this has the peppers. It's only cow that got this. And that's really dry and good. This one's sharper than my favorite. <laughs> this one's kind of salty, but it's still good. And this one? This is run with shit and gold. Mmm. Cheap and dope. And that's right here? That's here, yes. This will probably be her favorite. Sheep and goat cheese. All right. <laughs> mm. We're getting a lot of mmm. <laughs> That's very smooth and creamy. A little bit salty. So th this one right here. I'm going to small one. Do you have a small one? That's what? We have some more right here first one. All right. Taking one, some home. I'm going to try some of this meat. So this is beef as well. This is, is beef. This cow? Cow? No, it's cow. Mmm. Mm. Is it this spicy? It's really good. It's not as salty as a lot of the dried meats that we get around here. A little spicy. Pretty good. But what an amazing experience right off the bat. To be honest, we had no idea what to expect. 
Now, one thing this restaurant does is it has a free place for campers to park that has bathrooms and showers and water and electricity and everything right next door. So as part of eating at the restaurant or buying something in the store, we get to camp for free. So we had no idea what to expect if it was just gonna be a parking lot and a restaurant, but it is so much more. And I am so excited to eat lunch here. I think it's gonna be out of this world. So it's almost time, let's go do that. We made it to lunch, and to our surprise, there's some live music here. Yeah, a piano player, and there's quite a few people for it to be wintertime. But honestly, we have no idea what the deal is with this restaurant. I think it's a fixed menu, but we're about to find we're out. We're find out, and it's all from right here on the farm. And we got some pomegranate juice here. It looks red squeezed, and it's gonna be yummy. I like pomegranate juice. Talk about a unique experience. This is a welcoming plate. You can see it's got a little like taco shell, little tortilla shell with some cheese, some pickled onions, and some herbs. It looks delicious. Who doesn't like a tiny taco? <laughs> we are learning that in typical Albanian fashion, they are pouring on the food early. <laughs> the presentation is just beautiful. And it looks like we have some sun-dried either peppers or tomatoes. I believe they're peppers in olive oil. Some pickled okra. This looks like some pickled green tomatoes. And of course, these are olives. Over here, we have some cheese and some sort of bread. I'm not sure what that is, but it looks like it has some kind of vegetables in it. Another little bread here, and even still more here. All right, let's get into it. Looks absolutely delicious. And as Snow said, a lot of food. pickle and as you can say it is crispy just like a dill pickle it has a little tang all the little seeds are still inside but it is delicious oh this is that vegetable bag yeah i thought it had vegetables in it if you look at this you can see it's kind of like a cornbread and inside there's some leeks and uh some other kind of little bit of sauce, but it's like a leek bread and it's really good. Mm. They seem to serve this a lot here in Albania and I'm going to officially name it vegetable cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good. Now they have brought us a plate of vegetables. Oh wow, that looks good. And she said this is cheese with grilled onions in there. And that looks even better. So I'm glad looks, we skipped the pasta, Kurt. Yeah. So it looks like we have some kind of broccolini, like broccoli cauliflower stuff, a couple of Brussels sprouts, broccoli, a cabbage roll, carrots. little baby teeny tiny carrots, and I believe with this skin, this is eggplant, but I'm not sure why the inside is orange. Maybe it's a squash. You. The food is very unique and it's all so flavorful and delicious. And again, the presentation is just, this place is a must stop. I can just tell you that right now. I thought you were going into the cheese. I am. Oh, fondue cheese. None for you. None for you. All the cheese for me. <laughs> if Snow didn't say it before, I'll say it again. They keep bringing the food. So we have more cheeses here. And in the cheese tour, we saw these cheeses where they make them. 
and then they have some of the smoked meats and of course I showed you inside the smoker Snow what's the update over there you look busy <laughs> I took one of each vegetable before Kurt tried to steal them I'm gonna drizzle some of this cheese on top and I'm gonna get one of these onions out of here too right there a little onion <laughs> I'm gonna put it right in the middle of that. We're gonna need a big nap after this for We're sure. We're gonna take one, don't worry. Nice to meet you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Florida in the United States. Oh, yeah. Have you Thank you so States? much. No. <laughs> it's the first time for you here in Virginia. It is. We've been nice. here for one week. We love it. It's a beautiful country. Yeah. All right, so she brought out the pork skewer and took it off the skewer for me. And Kurt has lamb, lamb kebabs. And what wow. Is this? A yogurt. Yogurt. It's like a yogurt with lime and a little bit of olive oil and the yogurt here, it's almost more like a sour cream. It's so good. I am so happy. Oh my. The pork has a really nice grilled charred taste. Mm -hmm. A little crispy on the outside, nice and tender. Really good. Um, I don't even have anything to say. I just have to eat more. Kurt's going in for the sheep. These are lamb skewers, and we haven't had much lamb on the journey. I think we had some sheep down in Patagonia. True, not much lamb. Chewier than the pork, but oh, so tasty. The little bites. Are they crispy like the pork? This this is, this is might be your favorite, oh. to be honest with you. We tried to say no to the dessert. But with the language barrier, we were unsuccessful. And I think I'm happy about that now that I see this thing. This is like a little pomegranate slushy. It's even kind of cold. And look, they cracked the top of it. And it's a little icy in there. Looks like we have a bit of pomegranate. I think she told us what these are, and I can't remember. Well, maybe they're the grapes. And I think these are cranberries. She said they have those. In any event, the various fruits, and it all looks very interesting and fancy. <laughs> Look at this little tiny cup. I don't know how you, there's a little spoon. I think you dig the spoon in there and dig it out. It's a straw. A straw. It's like a coconut in Mexico, just a lot smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt, you're gonna hate it, so I'll drink yours for you. It's pomegranate juice, ice cold. I gotta figure out how to tie and tear into this thing. We'll be back in a minute. That was one of the best food experiences we've had on this journey. The food was local, it was authentic, and it was delicious, and there was all kinds of different stuff. We got to see how it was made. I mean, the presentation, the people were kind, everything was perfect, and it was a grand total of $32 for such a cool experience. It was like so many courses, they kept bringing the food, and it was like a lot of stuff we never even had before. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.